Uh, this is the grant management training district assembly. Um, I am the district grant <laughs> subcommittee chair for this year up until July 1st. And then at that point, Bob Worth from Framingham is uh, taking over for me. And I, I really appreciate him stepping up to the this uh, uh, very uh, fulfilling uh, uh, position. <laughs> So the purpose of this grant management is to ensure that all of our projects, you know, meet the grant objectives. They adhere to, you know, rotary standards to maximize project impact. And we, we, uh, we follow financial controls so that we safeguard our, our funds. Uh, and in turn, that maintains uh, Rotary Foundation's four-star top charity rating. <laughs> So the way I've partitioned it up is uh, briefly just to give you a brief rundown of you know where all the foundation grants come from, uh, from the Rotary Foundation basically. Uh, then module two, I'll talk about uh, our district grants, uh, the process, you know, and and, and examples, and uh, how to uh, apply come in uh, this coming May and June. And then at the last session, uh, last 20 minutes, uh, talk about global grants. And there, there will be some changes uh, from, from this year going into next year. And so uh, I wanna go over those uh, with, with you. Foundation <laughs> grants. So overall, uh, the, 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 the primary goal of, uh, of this is to teach you about the, the uh, similarities and differences between district and global grants and how the uh, foundation, the, uh, the Rotary Foundation funds these types of grants and how our district allocates funds towards these grants. And then teach you how you can participate uh, with these grants to help you implement your service project. Uh, so, Rotary International is the, the organization that you know we are members of, uh, and uh, you know one point two million members, and we do the service. We do the service projects. You know we have five hundred thirty four districts, thirty four zones, seven regions. So we have this massive infrastructure of support. The Rotary Foundation (TRF) is the charitable arm of Rotary International. And it is totally funded by donations from us as one of its uh, primary sources. And with the annual fund being the one that largely supports uh, foundation grants. So I will keep uh, reminding people that our support of the annual fund share program is how we get funds back in return to support our service project. Foundation grants. So as I said, TRF enables Rotarians to do good in the world uh, through district and global uh, grants. So the grants, you know, it's that's just money, but it utilizes the, you know, our passion, our energies, and uh, our effectiveness to do effective and sustainable projects within seven areas of focus. So the, the new one is the environmental focus. Why do service projects and use these grants? Well, service is the one is one reason, a big reason why people join and stay in Rotary. Service of self, one who profits most, who serves the best. Uh, I myself, that's why I join Rotary. It's because I want to make the world a better place, and I can't think of a better way to give back to the world. So involvement in these grants and service projects has been shown to increase club participation and feeds it in, into increased foundation giving. Seven areas of focus, as we as you probably know, uh, clean water, you improve clean water, then you can you know, re, uh, reduce the amount of disease, so you can begin fighting disease. Once you've fought disease, uh, then you can focus on saving mothers and children. And once you've done that, you know, the children need to be educated, so you support education. Better education means growing local economies, and, and 
good economies, less conflict in the world, promoting peace. And then we can focus on the environment, the other big challenge. <laughs> Foundation funds. OK, here is where TRF gets donations. Um, most, you know, m these are some of the major funds. So the annual fund share is uh, supports humanitarian grants in any of the seven focus areas. So I bold that because that's what I want to highlight because donations to the annual fund share come back to our district as district designated funds. We call it DDF. You'll hear the words DDF throughout my presentation, but that's the money that um, uh, Rotary, uh, the, the Rotary Foundation recognizes as our contribution, so, so we get that principle back in some manner or form. There are other, uh, certainly other uh, um, funds that you can donate to. Uh, you can donate to a specific area focus in the annual fund, but that does not come back to us. <laughs> uh, you can uh, uh, donate to a specific global grant that you want to support. You can donate to the Polio Plus Fund. You can donate to the fund that is responding to disasters. And there's the down endowment fund, which are major gifts or bequests of $2,000 or more. No, $10,000. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry, $10,000. Okay. So this, this, this graph kind of depicts how the money flows from your, let's suppose you donate $100 in this year, this Rotary year. Well, the $100 then goes to TRF. TRF spends 5% of that to and the interest in that amount of money over the three-year period from 2020 to 2023 to manage those grants. And so at the end of that three-year period, you get a bifurcation. You get $47.50 going to the, the TRF World Fund, and you got $47.50 going to our district designated fund, of which we allocate half to district grants and half to global grants in any given year. So it's, that's how the money flows. But then also, when we apply for a global grant, we get 80% matching of what is our DDF down in the bottom pink area in the global grants, we get matching of 80% from the World Fund. That 80% is different from today. Today it's 100%, but starting next year because these uh, the global grants became so popular, uh, it's it's you know lessened the amount that the TRF has to work with, and also the pandemic has has really um, uh, brought down our uh, the coffers. So uh, so so that's uh, so that's some of the changes that have happened. But nevertheless, you know that's still um, with that careful management of funds. That's still why to, uh, the the Rory Foundation has a four star rating. Uh, club participation, last four years for district grants, we had 17 clubs participating in 2017. We went up to 21 clubs. We went up to 24 clubs last year and we're back to 21 clubs. So we have pretty good participation. I'd like to see it you know, maintained above that 20, 20 club level. Foundation grants. So the, uh, like I said before, there's two types, uh, district and global. Um, we get a master district grant. Like I said before, you know, that $47.50 coming back to our DDF. Um, so we will get in this coming year for administration of district grants to our clubs, the grant amount will be approximately $33,000. And so we will, we will be able to allocate that to those applying for district grants come uh, May slash June. Uh, we will also have more than that $33,000 of DDF available to help clubs do global grants. Oh, that's a typo there. During 21, 2021 to 2022. Uh, those who are interested should uh, in, in, in the global grants should get familiar with uh, uh, the, uh, 
of the documentation online in Rotary International, especially the area focus the policy statement that shows you know, what kinds of grants you can do that cover different focus areas and what they'll be looking for. So that's a really good document to read. And they also tell about eligible and in ineligible activities for these grants. Uh, a comparison of district and global grants. Uh, you have to be qualified by our district for district grants and global grants. Um, in terms of humanitarian need, uh, district grants are usually confined to one specific area of focus. For global grants, you can have more, but they really prefer you to do one area of focus in your application because if you have more than one, it's going to go to two separate evaluation committees and you have to do twice as much work <laughs> to, get to, to, to do the project. Um, an, a needs assessment, uh, it's sort of a, a you know, we, we kind of do it for our, our service projects, but for global grants, it's a, it's a, a, a definite requirement. There is a, a community needs assessment, a form that is required to be filled out. And that you have to answer some very specific questions as the first step toward applying for a global grant. Size, district grants are typically small. Um, they are typically less than $30,000. Um, most typically they're in, you know, the few thousand dollar range. Uh, but we've had some fairly large ones that have been augmented by either state programs or such. I know there's a playground out there like at $50,000. That's, that's being help funded by a district grant of $2,000. Um, for global grants, the minimum size of your budget has to be $30,000. But they can, they can go and they have something called, uh, oh, I forgot what the, the term is. Uh, it's a very large program. <laughs> uh, sponsorship, uh, either a club or a district can do a district grant or a global grant. Uh, for partner clubs, we encourage partner clubs for district grants, but it's not required. It's uh, part of the rubric uh, that if you do a, a district grant partnering with another club, uh, you get a few points for that. Uh, for global grants, you have to have a host club in the country that you're implementing and you have an international partner. So normally we are the international partners. We raise the funds and we, we, we send the funds overseas to the host club. There is something called a reverse global grant where we become the recipients. Um, so location, most of our district grants are here in our localities. Um, there are usually one or two uh, district grants that are helping um, a community overseas. You don't need to have a Rotary Club overseas but I know our club is planning a water project uh, district grant and they want to partner with a rotor club over there because we, they also have eyes for uh, a global grant down, downstream. Uh, location, uh, I already covered that. District match to clubs, yes, yes. Uh, world fund match, no for the district grants and 80% of DDF for global. Uh, is, sustainability is required for global grants. It's preferred for district grants, but not required. And final approval, the district uh, does the final approval of uh, our district grants that we manage. Uh, and global grants are final approval by the Rotary Foundation. Okay. Foundation grants, club qualification. So Rodi, since our district grants are funded from TRF by our district master grant, uh, we are uh, have two requirements from the Rotary Foundation for anybody who receives a district grant. One is the, the club member, the club has to have a member who is trained in grant management training. And all of you here online are, are doing just that for your clubs. 
Um, we need a signed uh, annual club memorandum of understanding for 2021, 2022. Uh, that, that, uh, that I will send out uh, to all of you today, uh, a blank form, and you need three signatures. Um, you need the uh, uh, president, you need the president elect or a past president, and you need the future foundation chair, the one for next year. Um, so our district requirements for, for club qualification are we need to see a, an appointed club foundation chair on club runner for next year. And we need to see an annual gun, a goal set on club central for your annual fund share goal. Okay, so those, that's, uh, those are the requirements to get your club qualified. Uh, any questions? I heard a um. <laughs> nope, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, foundation grants. Yeah, we want you to, during, during the year, maintain good standing, comply with all uh, criteria, uh, mm -hmm. and fully implement you know, uh, stewardess, st st stewardship practices to prevent misuse of funds. Uh, okay. Um, the district decisions for these uh, foundation grants. So we receive the applications and that is uh, uh, the district grant subcommittee. And uh, so we will, we will make a decision as to how to best allocate our master grant, master district grant funds to satisfy as many uh, applying district grant applications that we can. Uh, it'll always be on the best use of funds philosophy. And um, let's see. So our district Rotary Foundation, uh, chair is Steve Sager he, and he's a, uh, and we as the district subcommittee report to him. Uh, when we make a re recommendation on the, the grants, uh, Steve then endorses it and, and gets the uh, foundation advisory board to approve uh, the allocation. Okay, any questions so far? No questions? How are we doing on time? 7.25. Mm, my watch stopped. <laughs> okay, 7.25. Okay, district grants. So, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, uh, after you hear this uh, portion of the module, uh, thank you. You'll understand the, the application procedure and review process, and you'll be able to uh, plan to implement your project. And you'll also learn how to report and close out a district grant. Uh, as I said before, district grants are small scale short term projects that address immediate needs in your community. The, the projects must relate to the mission of Rotary, um, but it's it's a broad. <laughs> it should be able to fall into the, one of those seven categories. So uh, I don't. Uh, I've never seen a proposed project not comply. Uh, there should be no conflict of interest. You know, uh, the money should not be going and benefiting a particular Rotarian or person. Um, and we also, we also uh, would recommend that you do not uh, support any one project or community uh, for more than three years. We'd like to see you change, change your grant after a while. <laughs> uh, the, the current committee as it stands, um, it's the GG chain uh, for this is for next year. Uh, as I said, Bob Worth 
is will be the DGSC. Uh, in bright green is the Foundation Advisory Board for next year. Cliff Robert, Robert uh, is our will be the district governor. I will be the district governor elect, and Elliot Rittenberg is the district governor nominee come Ju July. Steve Sager is the district Rotary Foundation chair, and we will at some point in the fall, late fall, have a district governor nominee designate, and that person will also be on the board. Uh, we, we, we would like to have uh, members of the committee from the seven areas within our district. Right now, we are missing three, area four, area five, and area seven. And uh, if any of you would like to step up and you have some interest in serving on this committee, um, I'm sure uh, Bob Worth would welcome you with open arms. <laughs> it's, it's not a real hard job, but you really get to, uh, to see what the, uh, the district is, um, is doing. And so I, I highly recommend that for anybody who's interested in you know, learning about projects, what is possible, and what other clubs have done. This, this is a great uh, place to learn that. Uh, the, the, these, these are the district grants that, uh, that were, uh, uh, are being implemented this, this year, this current year. And you can see that uh, there's quite a variety of, of, uh, of types of uh, focus areas. We have two Habitat for Humanity projects uh, in here. That's something uh, that's interesting. And also a, a bunch of uh, uh, meals activities, which are you know, really important in this uh, pandemic uh, age. Uh, oh, and for uh, Ken's benefit, there is a re radio reading service uh, project for the visually impaired <laughs> up in Lowell. <laughs> OK. Uh, district grants, uh, we, we encourage multi-club involvement and non-Rotarian participation. Um, you can get ideas from past, you know, that past district grant list. Uh, and uh, there is the, uh, the opportunity for the new environmental focus. And let's see, um, district sp uh, sponsored projects have focused on uh, in the past, uh, there was a hurricane relief project that one of our uh, members actually did the travel down to uh, um, Puerto Rico and, and actually uh, did uh, service uh, on site down in Puerto Rico. Uh, Steve Sager led the Guatemala Stove Project, which uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Westboro Club, uh, a bunch of members there, you know, actually went down and. Uh, the Westboro Club also uh, spearheaded the Rotarian made face shield for COVID-19, uh, in which we made uh, <laughs> these uh, handmade uh, face shields out of uh, clear vinyl uh, plastic. And uh, the, uh, the hospitals really loved the fact that we uh, uh, were paying attention to their needs and were so grateful to us for uh, having a, th a thought of them. Um, only one district grant per club. Uh, successful district grants. They normally have achievable goals. They meet community needs. They're sustainable. They involve uh, a partner. And um, one of the, uh, the side benefits of involving these partners is uh, it's a source of possible new recruit, recruit, uh, recruitment of uh, new Rotarians. Um, these projects, uh, the successful projects also have a good implementation plan and they do maintain proper stewardship of funds. So um, how to design your project? Uh, survey your community, see what it really, really needs. Uh, go to the, your uh, nonprofit organizations or community organizations in town and see, you know, what, what's on the, top of their hit lists for what they would like. Uh, get project ideas from other clubs. So normally, you know, you, you could have heard from in-person any pets uh, or district assembly, you know, 
um, what other clubs are doing. But now it's all Zoom. But you can you can visit them on Zoom, you know, or or uh, look at the list that's on our district uh, uh, district website. And to design your project, I always say. Uh, as you're, you know, uh, uh, gelling your ideas, work with the, the uh, district grant rubric, the project rubric. Uh, first of all, yeah, we need a minimum score of 20 in order to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, <Nope>. no. <laughs> um, and the scoring is not just to help us figure out which which projects are better we we have not re recently in the last two years we haven't turned down a project because the score wasn't high enough but it, it really helps you to uh, design a project that involves people and service and doing something in the uh, in the quest of service so we like to see you know, the clubs move from a check writing club, where you just write a check to an organization, to actually planning out a project where you have uh, physical, you know, physical involvement and having fun, because, you know, who doesn't have fun when they're doing service? Um, everybody feels good. Okay, uh, I, I, we want you to upload that rubric to, to your application. Uh, so, so here's a scoring rubric example, and, and people always get a little confused here. Um, so we show, and this is updated for Cliff's year. So he wants to have a focus on environment. So on the impact, you know, there's two. One is the number of beneficiaries that will benefit from your project, and whether it is uh, involved with the uh, environmental focus area or not. So that's a simple yes or no. And so here, you know, I've, I've said yes, uh, there's a hundred beneficiaries. And so you just enter all these green numbers here and uh, everything else is locked out. So I think this is all you can enter <laughs> other than your name and the, and the club number. Uh, and these scores are automatically computed. So you don't have to worry about, you know, these one, two, three, four, five up here. Uh, or just figure out, you know, how many volunteers in total you're going to have in your project, your retainer. Don't forget your planning. It's all part of that, you know, service. So the planning is good. For your non rotarian volunteers and volunteer hours, don't forget your own family if they're not Rotarians. So they are non rotarian you know, volunteers. Uh, and uh, and there's a there's a you know some additional if you have other rotary clubs you know that's more points so that's why I said uh, multi uh, multi club uh, projects uh, can can help you and and sometimes they're they're actually a lot of fun to do it with another rotary club. Any questions on that? Okay. Yeah, just uh, one question: what what is the uh, funding support numbers? There, yeah. funding support. Oh, so that those are dollars. And so, if somebody contributes outside of your club to that project, that would be, you know, like a like if a bank said, you know, and you approach the bank says, I want to do this district project. A lot of times, a, a, a community bank will will contribute to that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just what's typically a score? I mean, is 42 a particular typical score or? Are they... No, no, 42 is a high score. Okay. Uh, we've, we've, we've approved projects, you know, 22, 25. Okay. We, we've designed this so it's not so onerous, <laughs> but it forces you away. If you just wrote a check, you know, to, a, you know, to something, it, it's just not involved. You're not going to get the points. <laughs> so I always encourage clubs if they come to me with a project where it's it sounds like a check writing project. I, I try to I try to get them to think a little broader. You know, how can we turn this project into something more? And uh, they usually do that. So you know, I I I don't see uh, a problem with that. <laughs> 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is how you uh, submit a grant request. This gets a little confusing sometimes. So I'm going to try something here. <laughs> uh, okay. You all see that? This is the district website. And what I did was I logged into the members area, and then I clicked on district grants. And over here, you see on this side, as I'm moving my arrow up and down my hand, it says submit a grant request. That's where you open up your application. But you can only open it up if I've qualified the club. To qualify the club, remember I said you have to sign MOU, foundation chair uh, name, uh, a global uh, annual fund share goal entered. Once I see those three things, I will enable that link for your club. Otherwise, you won't be able to get in. Uh, but here, you can see in the middle here, uh, for the first step of the process for the district grant, you put your project name, you pick your year. Oh, I can. <laughs> 21, 20, 21, 22. Don't forget that. And uh, uh, let's see, see, you already knew that I was Bedford, so it filled that in for me. And here, just put a general description. If this is not cast in stone, we just want a general idea of what you're going to apply for. And this budget is not the grant money you're going to apply for. That's the size of your overall project. You know, the money you're going to raise plus the district grant that you're anticipating. So we just kind of went a general idea. And and then I will the you know I will accept it and then open up the rest of the application. And and then you'll get to this page which you'll see details, which is what you just filled in. So you can edit that now. And the application is down here, uh, which is general description, community assessment impact, sustainability, cooperating organizations, implementation plan. We don't, you want, you know, we're asking you for some very simple responses here. Like uh, like this is a, a, a my club. Just describe briefly what it was, and the duration, and etc. Yeah, you don't you don't have to be elaborate. In fact, if you if you filled out the rubric correctly, you should just be able to kind of take those numbers and just put them in here with a little bit of a couple of words wordsmithing. Uh, and then you also need to do the budget. So you need to do the costs up here and then the expected income down here. And don't forget to put the district grant amount. And then under documents, the documents is where normally you would document your, pro, your project as you implement it. Uh, but I, we've asked you to put, just upload your, your rubric that you started with, upload it here as well. Uh, and then if you want to see what you've entered, you can go to project overview and print it out for the rest of your club if you want. They'll kind of summarize everything in your application. Oh, where's the print? The print, no, no, don't tell. oh, it's right here. It's, it's, it's hiding behind uh, Jorge here. <laughs> uh, okay, any questions on that? Um, Victor? Yes. Uh, do you have to be certified to access this area or can any active member access it? Oh, a uh, good, good question. When, when you first did that uh, submit a grant proposal, only a trained member can access that. Once I've approved it to open it up, any member I believe can access it. That's true. Huh? Right? It's trained. Uh, no, I think. Even okay, beyond fine. trained, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A anybody, and if you, you can't, let me know. <laughs> okay, um, good. 
Can I just add something? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The only the only thing that you have to make sure is to <clears throat> have a, a, an account set up in Quebrano. And then once you're trained, you're supposed to have an access. Uh, we've cleared that up with uh, Club Runner because we had several hiccups in the past. Yeah. Uh, I asked the question because I think at some point I was not allowed to access. I kept getting this pop-up saying you cannot access this. But that was a while ago, Victor. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your, your club uses Club Runner, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you have trouble, let me know. Okay, um, next. So as I said, this is how you qualify your club. I've, I've beaten that to death. Uh, the grant process. Oh, okay. So a general rule of thumb for past years was typically a one-to-one -one match or slightly greater than one one-to-one -one match. In the range, we had a lot of uh, grants in the range of 1K to 2K. Um, some of the really large ones, uh, um, we could do a little more, but we, we did cap for a single club, a maximum of $3,500 in the past. That's, so our funds are down a little bit this year. So we may bring that max down a little bit. If you have two clubs, let's say you have a club joining you to do a joint district grant. You know, uh, I'll consider that as you know two clubs applying and then they'll you know, uh, to do the, uh, the match accordingly. I think uh, Sturbridge and uh, the Brookfields did one together this year. All grant applications will be reviewed uh, from June 30th to July 30th. So we want you to get in your applications before uh, June 30th. If you, uh, if you do it well before June 30th, I could even, and you ask me to look at it. I can I can even give you a little feedback uh, on the on the proposal. If we have questions after June thirtieth, please respond you know, immediately because we will be in the reviewing process at that point. Uh, okay, so this is the schedule. Question, how soon can we submit an MOU for the upcoming grant year? Oh, so there was a question about submitting an MOU. You haven't gotten it yet, but you will. Uh, you can submit it right away. You know, we take them on a rolling basis. <laughs> when do we need to buy? Oh, when do we need to buy? We need the MOU before you can even open the district grant application. So I highly recommend you get it in before you want to start that application. I would recommend you get it in by early May. Usually the MOU is the, the long pole in the tent for most people because they've got to get the signatures. And in this day and age, you know, you don't meet in the club and pass it around. You have to go to their homes or 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 send it and rescan it, send it, rescan it, et cetera. Um, We'll take a PDF or a photo. You can take a photo. Um, so we want you to qualify your club by the end of April so that you can begin that, just uh, open up that district grant application in May. Uh, you need to apply by June 30th. Awards will be made by the end of August around that time frame. And if everything goes to plan and uh, TRF is responsive, we think the first checks will arrive uh, beginning or end, end, beginning of December. Uh, um, when I mean the first check, I, I mean the, the master district grant. At that point, we can actually begin uh, uh, distributing the district grants. Uh, once the awards are made and you have a date, of that award, you can actually begin project execution because we'll accept all receipts and, in, and invoices post that award date. We will not um, uh, consider any expenses before the award date. And that's a that's a Rotary International 
uh, requirement. And they do that for uh, the global, grant, global grants as well. So can I clarify, Victor, if we're yeah. considering a project that's um, the, the timeline is for this coming summer, it just does not fit with the timeline for grant approval, correct? Uh, in the past, we've made exceptions by uh, reviewing that project beforehand uh, and, and make pushing that out as fast as we can. To make that award, so what what, what time frame were you thinking? Um, it was a summer program with the teen center to support the teens in Brookline, low income teens. Okay, well, uh, let's take this offline and let me know. All right. Oh, uh, one other thing um, back here. Uh, normally, we require you to finish out your, your prior uh, district grant. And we ran into a problem this current year where you know things are are being reprogrammed and 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 they are not able to to complete them by uh, end of June. So we've made it possible for them to extend that period of performance to the end of eight, uh, December. At which point, you know, it, it doesn't really affect uh, their their implementation of another global, uh, another district grant if they they were planning a spring project or a late spring project. So that's that's what that bottom line there is for, that they can still uh, participate in this round of district grants, even though they haven't finished out their uh, their previous one. We we are we are here to help. So just contact us. You know, either me or Bob Worth. And uh, we we will make things happen. Creating a budget. Uh, be realistic. Uh, competitive bidding usually normally applies to you know some very high ticket items for very large projects. It, most of the time, it doesn't really apply for uh, district grants, uh, but it, it, that, that they do require for global grants for a lot of large capital purchases. Again, I said avoid direct donations to beneficiaries. Normally, you're you're using the district district grants to purchase something, and then they they benefit from whatever you're purchasing. Or, or um, uh, for instance, uh, let's see, uh, like meals for kids. You know, the the, the money goes to uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Rise Against Hunger. Me, me, uh, money goes toward the purchase of rice and and, and materials. Uh, but the beneficiaries will get the benefit of the, the end product. Uh, disclose conflicts of interest. Usually that's not a problem. Uh, fill out the online application. And then we, ju we just went through that. So we don't have to, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, this is the application content of that, what we just went through a second ago. And, and it, it really mirrors what you filled out on the rubric. And so it, it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, oh, and uh, when I said you get bonus points for having another Rotary Club, that could be your Interact Club or it could be your Rotaract Club. So, yeah. <laughs> so you get, you get bonus points. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay. So in the implementation of the district grant, uh, before we send the checks out, we will ask you to provide proof that you have opened or have an existing separate uh, grant account in your bank so that you can keep all the inflows and outflows for a project all confined and not intermingled with other funds. If you have two district grants going, you know, because one's delayed, we ask you to just uh, fill out a, a, a ledger showing the ins and outs, the dates uh, for the two separate projects. That helps the auditors uh, figure out, you know, what's going on with the funds. Uh, we encourage you to take lots of pictures and, 
I, we love pictures and then we can turn them into videos and stuff, you know, and we, we'll give them back to you as a YouTube link. <laughs> and uh, publicize, the, you know, go on to uh, Facebook and Instagram, um, your e-newsletters, e social media, you know, great place to advertise for, for a successful service project. Uh, oh, so this is the, you know, kind of the flows, you know, through your dedicated project bank account. Um, so our, our uh, treasurer noticed that uh, they closed out our district grant account because they had a zero balance. So our recommendation is keep a dollar and they won't close it out. <laughs> uh, so you have a, a dollar in your starting balance. You'll have the district grant deposit. You'll have deposits from others you know, a bank or, you know, your fundraising or whatever. So those are all the inflows. And then you'll start to have checks to vendors, you know, checks to buy things. Uh, some of your Rotarians may buy things, you know, on their credit cards. So then you'll have checks to the Rotarians. Uh, and, uh, and so that's why a ledger sometimes helps to figure out what the money's being used for. <laughs> and so it, it all helps in, in the uh, uh, documentation. And you have, a checks to organizations, you know, like Rise Against Hunger or something like that. Uh, we would like to either have an invoice or something from that uh, organization or just a simple uh, letter of acknowledgement of the amount of money and what it was used for. And that, and that, that would be fine. Uh, and so, it was that, that, so everything in that red box would be covered by, um, all your bank statements for that month. So what we, I like to do is just, you know, tell my bank, hey, I want all the monthly bank statements starting at this month, the time of award, all the way through the, the project close. Then, it, then you'll have that PDF, multiple pages, you just upload it and you have all the bank statements that you need. Uh, and then you have the receipts and credit card statements and, and the letters of acknowledgement that kind of fills in the rest of the picture. And if you need, you know, you can upload the, the ledger. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the ledger and it's a simple Excel spreadsheet. It has dates, little notes for explanations of what it was. Uh, and it is, it is exactly uh, uh, derived from uh, a, the global grant ledger that TRF provides for global grants. Okay. Uh, stewardship. So when we say being a steward of the funds, um, as <laughs> uh, being responsible management of the grants, uh, report any irregularities. We have Rotarian supervision, financial records review, oversight of funds, and timely submissions of uh, reports. So when we ask you to close out your funds or to, you know, uh, upload your final documentation, you know, please do so. Uh, I think I've said everything here in detail. Observe local laws, that, that's primarily for global grants. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Yeah, district grant projects. So when you finish out your, your district grant, project, you'll do a final report. And that's on the same page as your grant application. So the, the other tabs, let's see. See the individual project report? That's where you, uh, you answer the questions. There are six of them. Describe the project, what was done. These, these are brief, you know, it, it's basically asking what you achieved on your rubric with regards to your plan. You know, it's just, just be honest. And, you know, we're just looking to see, you know, how well our service projects did. And then the other important thing here is the financial report. So a lot of times clubs will actually uh, uh, have a, uh, an increase in budget because they've raised more money. We, we want to see that in your final accounting here. Whatever is listed here in the final accounting should match all the documents 
bank statements and receipts that you've just uploaded. So, uh, oh, and also upload and documents photos. <laughs> Any questions on that? No? Okay. Uh, so Ro Rotary International requires us to keep documents for up to five years. So th these can be, you know, online records. <laughs> we keep them on the district for five years. Global grants. Do people need a break? Nope. Nope, good. <laughs> okay, we'll move right along. <laughs> okay, this is the last section. Since a lot of people are not uh, looking to get involved in global grants just yet. Um, uh, so I'll go through this quickly. Um, so let's see, global grants. So these are large international projects with long-term sustainable outcomes in one or more of the Rotary's seven areas of focus. Minimum budget, as I said before, was $30,000. Uh, I think overseas projects has to be in countries with Rotary Clubs. So I think that's an error. <laughs> Let's see. It has to. Huh? It has to. Yeah, it has to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, I think that, yeah, that there's an error there. Let me skip that slide. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as I said before, these grants applications have to start with a community assessment because uh, our, uh, TRF is going to look at this first before they will say continue with the application. Uh, they want to see uh, um, that the these grants will make a sustainable difference and there will be measurable outcomes. So there has to be some metrics that this uh, project will perform. The global grants have to have active involvement with Rotarians and community members. So they wanna see that these community members are actually part of that community assessment. So a, a, a really good community assessments occur when sometimes you'll have an outside organization an NGO, like, you know, who's really good in, you know, wells or, you know, water projects. They'll work with the local ro Rotary Club and they'll work with the community leaders and community groups, and they'll, they'll um, outline what the community needs really are, and then help design that uh, Rotary project to, to meet those needs. Uh, confirm that the, your partner club or is, uh, your host Rotary club is qualified. Uh, sometimes, um, We've had trouble in the past that they were not qualified. So, so save yourself a lot of headache and heartache and uh, do that qualification first. Um, we, we can help and we can, we can help find that information for you if, if your host club does not have that information. So one of the things I think uh, really helps to have a successful project is uh, Look for host clubs that have demonstrated their ability to do successful global grants. Uh, they'll have the experience, they'll have the experience with the community assessment, working with their community and with uh, 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 the, the financial accounting and uh, final reporting. And it'll, it'll save you a, a lot of heartache. <laughs> uh, okay. Agree on funding and implementing roles. Uh, insist on the local club having skin in the game. So, you know, what are they putting into this? Is it their service time? Uh, are they off? Yeah. The, the host club or the, the host, the, the community in which the project is being implemented is not expected to. Uh, put up money toward the global grant. In fact, that's why they're the community in need. 
So <laughs> they, 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 they are not expected to put up any money. <clears throat> uh, okay. So I just have some examples of global grant projects. You can see the, uh, there was a Kosovo with a scanner, that there's some equipment for a hospital. Uh, Wachusis did disease prevention treatment for Indian girls. Uh, Nashoba Valley had a micro flush toilet project. And Dilrika also had a, a water uh, and sanitation project uh, bringing, um, uh, actually uh, putting down pipelines to bring water to some out, outlying villages. Costs. Huh? The costs are interesting. Oh, the costs are interesting, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the global grant process is a little more laborious. So um, you have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> uh, it's a two-step process. You have to come through our district first. Uh, the reason is we want you to, before you spend any effort at all on the online application, uh, we want to make sure that you have approval for the DDF from our district first. Because if you don't have that, then you, you lose the ability to raise the money from the World Fund. Because uh, remember what I said is the World Fund matches the DDF portion. It will not match the club's cash portion. Uh, and um, uh, I have a slide a little later on that shows some, some future thinking that we may change for next year for this global grant process that is being uh, deliberated upon by our DG chain. <laughs> um, let's see. So the, the global grant proposal at the district level is a very, it's a very short form. So as you can see, there's some text here as to what, what the project is, and there is a budget. So you have, to, you have to at least plan out what you think this project is going to involve in terms of expenses and where you think your income is coming from. Because the, DD, the district will match using DDF funds the money you raise. And so we would like to see some commitments or at least verbal acknowledgement that the club is willing to uh, sign on to this. It, it's not a legal document in any sense, but it's, it, it shows a, a good faith effort in uh, securing, securing the funds. Uh, but once, once you fill this out, then the, um, uh, then the committee will re review it, give our recommendations to Steve and the Foundation Advisory Board and you get a green light or are asked to uh, modify something. So a sustainable project, you know, this was a, a really good thing. Don't, don't just give them a fish, uh, teach them how to fish. So there's a lot, of, a lot of good projects involve a lot of teaching. Teach them how to build a water catchment basin, teach them how to make bricks to build their schools, uh, teach them how to, to make uh, stoves, etc. cetera. So, uh, so the, the, those are uh, good projects. <laughs> those are also projects where you can actually send a group of Rotarians to uh, overseas and you know, post -pan pandemic, of course. <laughs> uh, again, be patient because uh, we may ask you to iterate on something. <laughs> and then, but that's not the last of the iterations. <laughs> okay, once you get past the district, then you, then you start in earnest on the global grant application. And there you have to do the needs assessment. And you'll have to upload it uh, in, in within the, the online application. Uh, hey, Victor. Yes, uh, Jorge. Uh, can I interrupt? Um, I don't know if you want to mention something about before going to do the community needs assessment that you have to submit a proposal also to RI. 
and usually in a month, they will answer to you if they approve the proposal, then they invite you to submit an application. Okay, I when, don't know if it's changed recently, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with that, uh, but I haven't, my, my last global grant application was three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. So, so let's, so do you, do, do they need to do the needs assessment first or no. do they, they want to see a proposal to uh, uh, TRF first? No, uh, I would say at the same time that you are doing the process at the district level, you can submit a proposal. And basically what you write in the proposal is very much the same material that you will use mm -hmm. if you are invited to submit a global grant application. Ah. And then they give you, after they approve the proposal, they give you, uh, what I remember is about three months to complete the global grant application. The online global grant application. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if you get approved, then how long do you have before you have to have all the funds lined up? Do you get a year? Uh, no, 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 as soon as possible. You want to do that as soon as possible. Uh, uh, it can be, I believe it's two or three months that they expect you to put everything together. I mean, you can apply for an extension as well, if needed. Yeah, I I th I, I believe it was about six months to, to get all the uh, the, all the funds be. all the funds mm -hmm. into TRF. It could be. Yeah. Well, okay. Victor, I, I just I had think, a quick yeah, quick question. Yeah. Uh, you know, this proposal, Jorge, that uh, needs to be submitted, um, is that a particular template that you have to follow? Like we have one for the district that Victor yes. showed. Yes, okay. that's correct. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I believe what Jorge is talking about is the initial proposal, Victor, that <coughs> you send as soon as you have something, uh, I would call it arranged with the other party, and you send it to the Rotary International. There is a template uh, at TRF, you send it there. And you remember how we did that uh, this year with the Mexico grant? So they came back to us and said, you need to fix this, this and that. But simultaneously, at the same time, nothing actually stops you from uh, uh, working with your partner and start the um, uh, needs assessment. So Diana, I guess my key question is in terms of sequencing, where does the district global grant proposal go to you, the two-page form, where does that sit in the cycle? That's step number one. Okay, so that's first. Then we do the, 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 the proposal that Jorge is referring to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. simultaneously, you can, you know, contact your partner, um, uh, your, I would say, you know, rotary partner client. Right and right. just start the process at the same time. So but, I, I just want you to remember what Victor said at the beginning when he started talking about global grants. It is a lengthy process and you have to have a patience. Uh, I have never heard of a global grant that was started and completed within the same rotary year. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I actually yep. had, uh, I actually had a, uh a lengthy process that got rejected. Yeah. And then I completely rewrote it. And then, yeah. uh, then we yeah. called it second chance. <laughs> 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 and we got that one approved. <laughs> so Diana, before we submit the proposal to uh, RI, should we wait for the district to at least make sure they approve that two page form? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Got it. You, you, you don't have our DDF, you, you won't be able to fund it. Got it. 
Thank you. And, and Victor, uh, uh, please just um, uh, remind us all that if we have several clubs that um, uh, are that started global grants this year, but if they are not completed, I mean, if they are not um, processed by the TRF by June, they have to be rewritten, unfortunately, because of the changes of the new procedure for global grants. The new matching. Yes. So the budgets change. So we have yes. to reapply. Okay. Yeah, we've, so we, we've been, you know, kind of pushing on the clubs that have submitted things and trying to get those things completed before, uh, the, the, before the July 1st deadline. Well, knowing, knowing that the matching is coming down to 80% and knowing that the cycle time is much longer, we might as well put the budgets now, if we are putting in an application, assuming an 80% uh, uh, Match. you know, matching. And that yeah. way, you, most of your paperwork is then still going to be valid. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's a good recommendation. But you, you'll see, a couple of slides down, you'll see some things that may impact your thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we've beaten that to death. Uh, the budget, you know, the budget's a budget. Um, so this is the financing that we talked about. $30,000 minimum, VDF matched at 80%. Uh, international sponsors, that's us is at least 30% of total sponsor funding. But that, that's usually you know, not, not hard to achieve <laughs> for us because we're the international partners. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is the new thoughts. And uh, Steve and Diana and myself and Cliff and Elliot, you know, we're, uh, we're, we, we're faced with a couple of challenges. One is the the, mat, the world fund matching is going down to 80%. And they're no longer matching the cash portion that the clubs raise. So the other thing that's in play is our donations are going down. So that means our DDF is coming back lower. <laughs> Every year is going down a little bit. Uh, so this is what some other districts are doing uh, in some form or another. So we want to increase the global grant world fund match. And to do that, we have to increase the DDF that we give to the project. So the idea is, so on the, the old way, <laughs> let's say we wanted to, to split you know, the contribution between DDF and the club cash, and there's you know, 5% tax on club cash, and that's why the numbers look a little skewed. Um, but to get $30,000 the old way, the club would have to raise $11,278. DDF would be $10,714. And then the World Fund would be $8,572, giving a total of $30,000. That's what would have to happen if we don't change things. So what's I believe it was Steve, or maybe it was Diana, who mentioned that there is another way that clubs are doing this. And that is instead of a club donating their funds to the global grant directly, it promises to send that amount to the annual fund. <laughs> we will get a portion a significant portion of that back three years down the line. <laughs> but see what happens is the club donation now becomes $11,000 straight to TRF. We will put up $16,000 and 666. And now the World Fund goes up to 13,333, giving a total of $30,000. Now, where does that extra DDF come from? Well, we have some unspent 
DDF World Fund. <laughs> Basically, the funds that we don't spend in our DDF, whether it be World Fund or, or you know global grants versus district grants, if we have unspent funds and we don't use it, it rolls back to our DDF for future years for global grants. So we have a bit of a reservoir there. It's not gonna last forever, but it may last three years. I don't know, <laughs> but it may get us through to increase our DDF and help the clubs implement their projects. So Victor, that, that's I just wanted to ask about that. Huh? I just have a question about that. I believe it has changed now that DDF, uh, you, the district will be able to keep it only for five years. Yeah, but it's first in, first out. <laughs> yes, yeah. but, but it is not the case in our district because oh, we no. don't have so much reservoir. Yeah. So it is actually, this new change is going to be implemented in 2025. Uh -huh. So it, it does, it, our district is, you know, just yeah, we about it. Yeah, don't, we're, we're, don't make it more complicated. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we've been spending our, yeah, our, our yeah, DDF. Yeah, exactly. Now, some other clubs exactly. have millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, but, yeah. We, we've been spending our DDF, so no, <laughs> it's not us. <laughs> okay. Okay, any questions on that? So, so that, that is being actively discussed right now before we get into the new year. And hopefully so, we'll have a policy. So, it's my, so my understanding is in the club, if the club in that case donates eleven thousand um, dollars, they're guaranteed to get that sixteen six six seven. And the thirteen three 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 years yeah. in the future. Right, right. So, Provide, so that providing that the the global grant proposal is accepted and approved by the TRF, the foundation, the foundation, Robert foundation, yeah. Oh, I have a question, if you don't mind, Victor. Yeah, go ahead. So to, to expand on Rob's question, is this a donation to TRF in the new model? Is this a donation to TRF that is attached to our club so that if the project is not approved, we can go and apply it towards another project we may submit for? No, I don't. We don't want you, we don't want you to, uh, to make that donation until the project is approved. Okay. Yeah, because remember the sequence. The once once we approve it, we we will re put in reserve the DDF in anticipation that it will be approved. Then TRF will make their decision whether to approve the global grant project. If they approve it, then you have I believe six months to gather all the funds, and and then and that and during that time period you send. The club's contribution to TRF and for annual fund share, not to the global grant pro project. And so we 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 are thinking about how to to make sure <laughs> that the club has contributed that above and beyond what they normally contribute to the annual fund share. <laughs> so that's that's a little bit of a trickiness, but we we have we have records. We can look back to see what your annual giving has been. And, but if, if you like raise funds from, from other clubs and, and yourselves uh, for the purpose of this global grant, then, then it should be easy for you to just donate it to, to TRF. Okay. See how that works? <laughs> well, in the, in the past, it was always a situation where you were supposed to pre-fund into TRF in order to write grants against it. And it sounds like they've changed the model where you need the two steps of approvals before you can fund it through TRF, which makes it less complicated. Yeah, it's it's less complicated. So 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 you know we we reserve the DDF for your global grant, and and then TRF says I approve it. Now get your money into this account <laughs> as soon as you reach the threshold. They they actually don't care where the money comes from. As soon as you reach a threshold of which you promised that amount of money, they will release the entire grant with the World Fund match back to 
your your either your club bank account or the host club's bank account. That's how the process works. So one follow on question, if you don't mind, I know you have three more slides to do, and I apologize. So if we have if we have funds that are targeted for a district grant that need to go to TRF, do we send those in now? Or do we wait for us to create the district grant proposal and all the other stuff? Oh, you're talking about a district grant? Yes, sir. Okay. The, everything I said before was about global grants. So if you're talking okay. about district grants, you don't you don't have to put any money in 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 the in the in your grant account yet. Uh, you can wait until your project is approved. Okay. You know, the day after it's approved. You can put, you can fund your 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 donations that you've collected, put it into that grant account. And then you can actually start executing that project with those funds. And in fact, you want to advance, you know, you know, put more uh, to cover what the district grant would have put in. Then you just treat the district grant as being refunding your club. But in the past, you had to pre-fund through TRF in order to get access to those. You had to have a three-year forward-running total. Oh, and no, no, uh, that, that's only for the, 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 that. that <laughs> don't worry about that three-year thing. <laughs> that, uh, that, that's, uh, yeah, um, that, that, that we, it affects the district, not, not the clubs. Okay. But the, the yeah. amount of money we have to play with to distribute to your clubs that amount of money happened three years prior. And then we, we get it three years after that. And so we know for the coming year, how much we're gonna get. I said it was $33,000 for district grants. So all you have to do is plan out your project and then apply by May slash June for whatever district grant pr uh, project you wanna implement. And then in August, you'll, you'll hear from us and then uh, uh, you can actually begin the execution of that, that project the day after. Thank you, sir. So Victor, you said, you said that, that the district gets $33,000 for, for district grants. Yeah. Um, did, I don't recall if you said how much um, the district gets for global grants. I said more than $33,000. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's, I forget what it is, but that's why we can, we can boost this amount of DDF here uh, to 16,000 okay. and still okay. fund. And, 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 so, and so the district typically probably does maybe two or three global grants a year, is that? We typically, we do more than two or three, three or four. Three or four, okay. Yeah. We, we do one big district global grant where we actually, you know, we did the stove project, uh, uh, the Puerto Rico project, uh, where you know we send a team of Rotarians someplace and uh, help uh, a community in need, um, and then you know a club individually will team up with a bunch of other clubs in our district to to implement a global grant. Um, okay. Yeah, it's for for any global grant, it's really good to. To uh, so so the way it works is um, uh, since you got a, you've got six months to gather up the funds. So if you have a really good idea for a global grant project, you you develop the plan, and then you start talking with other club member uh, other clubs, and uh, and see we even get their interest up to uh, participate. A lot of clubs don't want to don't want to be a, a international partner because it's a lot of work. Uh, but they would be more than happy to donate, you know, a thousand dollars to, you know, or five hundred dollars to to par par participate in a, a global grant project. Like yep. <laughs> I think we did that a few years ago. Yeah. No. No. It's it's great. It's great. Okay. Uh, guidelines. So you know, smart goals, stewardship, financial plan, document and retention, reporting requirements. So. Uh, your host Rotary Club will have the greater burden to uh, 
for the documentation. But you as the international partner are responsible. So you have to work with them to you know pick up the slack. <laughs> uh, okay, so the, this this one is uh, it was sort of in the background, but uh, not really uh, taken up on by many by any clubs recently. Uh, we we do have a way for a club participating, but who is not the host, who is not the international partner, to make DD funds available, and that is if uh, there is an active participation involved. So if you have got some expertise and you go on a trip to Kenya or something, and you can utilize that expertise, uh, we we could match. Uh, we uh, we could actually supply some funds, you know, two thousand dollars, three thousand uh, dollars in DDF. To you know, to match uh, what you put in. You know, if you put in, if your club puts in three thousand dollars to send you overseas to to help with this global grant, um, you could get uh, DDF to help you. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Victor, I have a question, sir. Yes. Okay, so. For those clubs like us that don't have a 501c3 set up for accepting donations, targeting specific uh, grants that we're working on, is there a is there an easier mechanism to run those through the Rotary District Charity Fund without having to um, go through all the paperwork? Because in this particular case, if we do a if if we do a say a promotional piece trying to gather donations um you know the current process is we have to reach out to district and they sort of have to approve it and do all sorts of stuff and before they'll accept the funds that's sort of what's been put in place the past couple of years hmm. is there a mechanism which allows us to take those donations and flag them for that particular project that we're working on huh uh i don't know I can find out. Okay. And I throw that challenge to you and Diana. <laughs> <laughs> so, so can you uh, send me an email specifically what's, uh, what's preventing you from doing the current process? Copy that. Because I, I, know, not, I, I know like three, I think at least three clubs who uh, funded district grant projects uh, using this mechanism and they collected all the funds and i know like for tingsboro then um, the district treasurer sent one check to the tingsboro police department to purchase uh, these devices i will reach out thank you okay uh, victor i have a question yeah go ahead bob rob yes bob? um <laughs> is it possible for our club as we did uh, 10 years ago to get a global grant if it's uh, aimed at the same overseas club and overseas organization, which would be the recipient. In other words, that is do it all over again for a slightly different project. Oh, I don't see why not. Okay. <laughs> first basic question. <laughs> If, if it was successful the first time, you, you, you yeah, it's still, like you're a good, good foundation there. There is some wording in what you've gone through, uh, which suggests that this is a... No, 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 that, that is if it's the same community over and over again. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and even at the district level, we're beginning to see the same old district grant here uh, right. like again, because it, it's easy. You know, um, so we're trying to shake that up too at the district level. <laughs> Thank you. Victor, one question. Uh, this is really based on your slide 56. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, which was the, the one on the, you know, uh, the participation possibly of a DDF yeah. um, on a global project if we are raising some money from our club. So like we have a situation where we are involved with a uh, raising some funds for a, uh, a district uh, 3020, I believe it is. Okay. And so uh, I was trying to understand the, when you say that we have to be actively involved, 
Yeah. Does it necessarily mean a trip to the site or can it be involved with the planning or some way so that we can we can boost it with the DDF? Maybe like we are we are raising two thousand dollars and I was going to come to you with a request to see if we could justify uh, some DDF funds uh, based on our participation. And I'm just trying to understand, you know, what what is a reasonable level of participation remotely, uh, rather than spending the funds right now to travel and spend that money. Yeah. So when I say active participation, or or, or Steve says it, and is Diana still on? I don't. Uh, no, she's not on. <laughs> uh, Elliot's on. <laughs> um, when we say active participation, we mean in the execution of the grant. So to give you an example, even though we didn't take advantage of it because we are actually the international partner, we had an active participation by our club in an educational grant in Kenya. The grant involved the creation of uh, class materials for a self-paced uh, educational program for, for dropouts who wanted to return and, and try to get uh, uh, high school diplomas or, uh, or uh, IT skills. So our club volunteered to review a lot of these YouTube videos that were part of this curriculum. So that is active participation. Okay, okay. So it can be done remotely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. That, that was my, that was my yeah. real- uh, uh, But if it's purpose. just in the planning, God, you know, that's kind no, of- No, 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 I understand. Um, I, I said planning, but really we are way past the planning. It will be as part of the execution stage at this point. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you, you present a good case and there's active involvement and, and people are yes. spending good service hours on it. Yeah. I, I would say by all means. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead, Lynn. Hey, Lynn. In the past, um, it was, if you were not a 501c3, mm -hmm. um, there was a way of having money collected through the district. That's still the, that's still the case. Um, so I don't know if, if uh, that club that was speaking, I don't remember who it was, uh, when you're doing a grant, if, if you could do it that way. Yeah, he, I, I, yeah, he, well, he was kind of contacting me offline. Uh, but I, I thought he was implying that the, the was rather onerous on the paperwork and he wanted to have like, uh, instead of a project based uh, thing, he wanted just to have it so he could tap into it. Right. But if, yeah. if you let everybody know that it is available, that through the district, yeah. Um, that, because I know our club is, is not, we're a 504, or, you know, 501C4. Or see, um, but that it the district does have that available with people in clubs. Right. Yeah, we we had three clubs who requested that and filled out the paperwork, and uh, and and they were you know all the money was sent to the district it, okay. on behalf of the the club's project, and uh, and then once you know the funding uh, ended then uh, one check was sent out to the uh, where, where they instructed the, the money to flow. So I'm still here. I mean, I- Oh, there you are, Jake. <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. Yeah, we utilize the Rotary uh, Charity Fund. The issue is over the past year or two, they've changed the methodology. You have to, you have to pre-authorize the, the, the donation into the Rotary Fund, uh, you know, the District Rotary Fund. And for us, we're constantly receiving monies, or if we do mailings or what have you, we may have a list of projects that we want to fund. Uh -huh. And so for us, it's important for people, for person, you know, for, for uh, personal tax deduction reasons, we have people who want to donate and they want to take that, that donation as a, you know, for deduction. Yeah. And so it's important for us to utilize, you know, please send your money to Rotary 7910 District Charity Fund. Uh -huh. And the problem is, is that we're receiving, I'll give you an example. We had a Rotarian pass away. We're receiving checks here. Our treasurer who contacted the, the, the um, administrators of that fund, basically they're telling them they have to go through this approval process. 
I would like to have it a lot easier so that I can have a list of projects and people send in their checks attached to it, you know, telling us what project they want to donate it to. And we send it to you. You guys send the letters out to the donors and it goes into the pool for that. That makes it a lot easier for us. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah, it doesn't make it easier for our treasurer, though. <laughs> hey, it's tough taking money, right? <laughs> we all have that problem. All right, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Well, thank you for listening. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> Very nice. Good night. Great job, Victor. Keep up the good work. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Bye -bye. Thank you, Victor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Stay in the meeting? Uh, yeah.